Hopefully you can enter in and uh, worship the King of Kings. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just come before you tonight. We thank you for this place that we can gather as your people. As one, Father, we just ask that your Holy Spirit tonight would just move in here. You would just take over, Lord, and uh, soften every heart here tonight and give us a tender heart of worship tonight, but also a jubilant praise because we have much to be thankful for because we're sober. And Lord, we thank you for all the good things that you've done in our lives. And we just ask that we have an enjoyable evening tonight, but that your word would go forth in power and in the Holy Spirit, and it would change us internally and forever. Give us hope, give us peace, and just be with us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Andrew. You guys did great. So, welcome everybody. Um, like Kurt said, we do have a lot of new faces here tonight. So, if you are new, if you are watching on our live stream tonight for the very first time, this is our Monday night recovery meeting here at Calvary Monterey. Um, and here we celebrate the victory over addiction uh, from the power of Jesus Christ. So, let's go ahead and get into it. Regeneration is a group of men and women affected directly or indirectly by any life-dominating sin. Regeneration, to throw off your old sinful nature in your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes, put on your new nature created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. We no longer have to walk in the guilt and shame of our past, and we can now overcome the hopelessness resulting from our addictive behavior by remembering the promise from 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. We believe that a person can be set free from addiction and compulsive behavior by the power that comes from Christ. We are told in 1 Peter 5, 8, be alert and of sober mind because the enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to de devour. We believe that attending meetings such as this and applying biblical principles to our lives that we can be set free from the chains of addiction and begin to live productive, joy-filled lives. Jesus said, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. And I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Again, so welcome everybody again. I welcome everybody who's watching on our live stream. Um, if you are here for the very first time, can you please raise your hand? We have a welcome chip that we would like to give you. Um, a couple just off the top, uh, Keandra, K.O., um, and Jasmine, who's new to the women's house. We're very glad that you are here. And then we got one right over there. Can I get your name? Mm -hmm. Ellie? Letty. Welcome, Letty. We're so glad you're here tonight. Is there anybody else here for the very first time? We've got Laurel. Welcome, Laurel. We're so happy that you are here tonight. And if you are uh, watching in, um, on our live stream, uh, you can go ahead and say hello in the comments. We'd love to welcome you guys. Um, is anybody celebrating 30 days of sobriety? We've got Andrew, congratulations. And we also have Jasmine celebrating 30 days. Do we have anybody celebrating 60 days of sobriety? We got Terry. Congratulations, Terry. Absolutely love him. When he first got here, he told me he liked The Walking Dead. I'm like, we're best friends. <laughs> and also, Jasmine is celebrating uh, 60 days of sobriety also. Do we have anybody celebrating 90 days of sobriety. We've got Jasmine celebrating 90 days of sobriety. <laughs> um, is anybody celebrating six months of sobriety? We've got Jasmine celebrating six months of sobriety. <laughs> Jasmine is picking up all of her chips. She actually was in um, the Monterey County Jail for seven months. And um, I know from my own personal experience, even in jail, it's hard to stay sober in there. So i um, very proud of her for picking up her chips today. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, so we're at six months. Is anybody celebrating nine months of sobriety? Okay. Anybody celebrating one year of sobriety? Multiple years? Julio? Three years? That's right. Congratulations, Julio. Julio is just newly married, so we want to congratulate him in that too. And we're also going to celebrate James. He's celebrating two years of sobriety. He's probably too shy. Oh, there he is, over in the sound bar booth. Congratulations, James. Love you. Um, and today I am receiving my multiple year chip. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, so last Friday I celebrated uh, three years. Uh, May 21st, 2018, I was released um, from the Monterey County Jail. Um, I had a three-year prison sentence over my head, uh, but they allowed me to come to the bridge. Um, I came into the bridge uh, very hardened, not wanting to come. Mike can uh, tell you all about that. <laughs> Uh, but I came in, I wanted to do my time, I wanted to just get through it, leave, and go back to my life and do exactly what it is I was doing um, before I had gotten arrested. Uh, little did I know that while I was here, a Jesus would come into my life. Anybody who knows me knows that I am not um, the same person that I used to be. God has truly uh, transformed me from the inside out, and it, it's been a hard, it's been a hard um, to allow God to work the old man or the old woman out of me. Um, I didn't run a perfect program. There was a lot, and still is, a lot of growing pains, um, but it's so worth it. It is so worth it. And today I'm thankful to God for who I am, the new me, the new Vanessa that's walking in Christ. Um, and I'm just thankful for the people that he's put in my life. Um, Mike and Michelle, uh, mentors of mine, Susie, Heather, um, all April, Denise, all the people, um, Tammy, who has helped me, you, all of you guys have helped me so much, and I'm just very thankful for you guys, my family, who has supported me and encouraged me the whole time. Um, <laughs> my encouragement to you guys is um, to keep your hearts open to what God has for you. Be obedient in the little things, the things that you're naturally wanting to push against. That's what helped me. <laughs> Um, so thank you guys for all being a part of my recovery and my walk. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, so if anybody um, would like prayer, if anybody has um, any questions about this meeting, um, if there is anybody uh, who just needs somebody to talk to you can reach out to one of our regeneration um leaders and um if you'd like to give tonight you can do that um we have two offering boxes on either side of the um walls uh going towards the double doors in the back um you can do that and you can also give online at calvary monterey um you can um select regeneration um and if you are making out a check tonight you can go ahead and make it out to Calvary and then memo regeneration. All right, well, we'll get into some more worship with Kurt and Andrew, and I'll go ahead and pray. So, Lord, I just, I do thank you. I thank you for the transformation that comes when we're walking uh, with you, when we're growing in you. I thank you for the sobriety. I thank you for Julio and James. I thank you for the new gals that have entered into the house. I thank you just for everybody that's here tonight, wherever they're at in their walk, wherever they're at in their 
recovery, Lord, I ask that you would just strengthen them, strengthen them and um, give them encouragement, give them the courage to just keep going one more day. Um, Lord, we, we thank you for who you are. We love you. And it's in your holy and precious name that we pray these things. Amen. Amen. So Mike, you know, Mike's, one of Mike's favorite verses is found in Joel. Joel, uh, it's, um, you know, uh, the Lord will restore all the years that the canker worm is eaten. Amen. And you hear stories like that here all the time. And uh, I'm one of them. Uh, I did 31 years in prison. And uh, I got out uh, four years ago. And I was supposed to do uh, five years on uh, parole. But they discharged me a year early. And uh, praise the Lord. Yeah, praise God. All praise to God. And, you know, uh, our past sometimes, you know, continues into our, our new walk, you know, because there's a lot of things, you know, people still, we had felonies or whatever we, you know, we, until we went through. Like recently, I just got a God story real quick. Uh, God brought me a beautiful wife. I have a wonderful, wonderful woman for a woman of God who I love. And we opened a restaurant in Carmel. And they were transferring the beer and wine license, you know, over to us. And part of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, requirements is I had to give my life scan because she's married to me. And it's all in her name and everything, but she's married to me. So I had to give my life scan. And they called us on the phone and they told me, oh, you can't have a beer and wine license because of Kurt. You know, and I went, man. So I just began to pray. I prayed about it. I said, well, God, they don't have the final say. You have the final say. And I began to pray about it and pray about it. And I just wrote a real sincere letter to the man in charge. And uh, he called back and he said, you know what? I'm going to grant you that beer and wine license. You know, because that's, that's, that's your business, you know. And so, I mean, you know, God, God has the final say in everything in your life not the authorities. The authorities are there for your, in your life to, to obey and everything. Believe that. Don't be speeding down the road because you will get a ticket. Uh, but God has the final say in everything. He determines your steps. He determines when he opens doors, when he closes them. You know, he, he does it all. He is, he is our Lord. He is our shepherd. He's the one guiding and leading us. And guess what? He leads us always to green pastures and still waters. Amen. And he does restore the years that the canker worms even. I mean, there's a lot of years, 31 years. Oh, Lord. But uh, he restored it, you know, and I'm living a, a prosperous, wonderful life. And it's out here. And I was living that in there, too. And, you know, God is good, man. God is good. So all you guys that are, I see a bunch of new faces that are in the program. And you might, you might have, you know, things in your past, felonies and warrants and all these there you'll hear story after story after story after story here about how judges changed their minds someone didn't go to jail right ashley uh you know and you know she got uh, right right and and you know you hear about kids being you know they, they were going to take away their kids and and Chelsea got all her kids back you know and i mean it's it's just god does one thing after another through this meeting, through this meeting and through this ministry. So don't lose heart. Just continue coming, continue praising God, and God's going to do wondrous things in your life. Believe me. Believe me. He, he will. Amen. So I just want to say hello to my wife. She's watching from Chicago right now. Hi, babe. Hi, Layla. <laughs> you know, so let's get on our feet and worship God. Amen. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. You are beautiful, my sweet, sweet song. And I'll sing it again.
stretches to the sky. I think it's John, First John chapter four. Are we still going through First John? Amen. It says, you know, we've come to know and believe the love of God. Amen. Amen. And we come to know the love of God through the scriptures, but also through ministries like the bridge. Amen. And people that come alongside of you that are filled with the love of God, that have been touched by the love of God. Amen. And we have to believe that God loves us. It says we come to know and believe the love that God has toward us. Amen. And a lot of these songs tonight are about the love of God because the Bible says to sing with the understanding. Amen. This, they're just not just pretty songs, you know, with pretty melodies. They're speaking about a person that we adore, that we love. Amen. That who loves us, though. And so uh, this next song, I love this song. It's called How He Loves.
Thank you, Mr. Kurt. Now, I'm going to ask you guys a question. When Kurt shared, he said he did 31 years. Amen? But his sentence was life. But where is he at? See what I'm saying? So that says something right there. Okay, when you get a life sentence and you're sitting in prison and you're supposed to spend the rest of your natural life in prison, but Kurt spent the first few years being a knucklehead, you know, I've wasted my life, so what's the point anyway, but then he got serious and then he turned his life around. He learned how to play music. He learned the Bible inside and out. He wrote many, 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 many songs and he just decided the life that he was going to live as he spent his rest of his life in prison. Um, the interesting thing was this, this Monday night for a uh, uh, meeting for many, many years was on the radio. And so Kurt um, and a lot of the people at Soledad Prison would go out to the yard on Thursdays at, I think, 11 o'clock, Kurt? Tuesdays and Thursdays at 11 o'clock, and they would listen to, to this message in the prison. And Kurt reached out to me and... Uh, um, he heard me do a radio interview. Kurt reached out to me, um, bought, a, bought a book that I wrote, and then read it. And then uh, somebody contacted the prison about him possibly coming into the bridge when he was going to be paroled. So I got to pick him up, get an In-N-Out burger. It was a good time. But all that to be said is, is things can change. You know, congratulations to Julio. I mean, you know, I mean, really? I will give you fair warning, though. Those of you that know Julio, there is a junior Julio on the way um, in the oven right now. So just be, be forewarned, all right? Uh, so also, congratulations. If you know Julio, you know exactly, you know how most people respond to you. Other people are like, what is he, what? There will, there will be another Julio in, in this world, and it's going to be, I'm just giving you all fair warning tonight. All right. But I just want to give a congratulations to James, uh, two years, Vanessa, three years. It's really weird for me because I turned around and I saw Vanessa's mom and dad both sitting back there, and it reminded me, oh, that's right, we're not her parents. You know what I mean? Because that's what we, we feel like. We feel like her mom and dad. We do. And her friend and, and everything that goes along with that. And then I look in the back row and I see Hector. How many years, Hector? 2012 and ever. Okay. Johnny, how many years? Yeah, see? And then we got Viola back there. We got Ashley here. I mean, so many people. We have so many, 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 many years of sobriety. And, and they didn't come into this saying, oh, yay. You know, when I interviewed Vanessa in jail, she was so snotty. I don't want to come to your program. I want a 30-day program. And so it kind of annoyed me. Like, I just drove all the way here to talk to you. You're just being like a little snot. So I went out and called Michelle, which I do after I interview a female and tell her what I think. And I said, well, she's kind of snotty. She thinks she's going to do a 30-day program, but probation left it up to me. So you can pick her up tomorrow. I see she's not going to be happy because she does not want to come here. Um, but when I think of the number of nights that her parents wondered, is she going to live? Is she going to come home? Is she going to be in jail? Is she going to get killed? Is she going to kill somebody else? It's heartbreaking to think of it. But now for them to get here, to sit here tonight and see what she's doing now, it has to make them proud of what she's doing, proud to be her parents instead of stressed out about being her parents. I know that James's parents are very, very proud of him, and I'm just proud of all of you guys, um, Jasmine and all of your, your chips, you know. I know how it's hard to stay sober in jail. Believe you me, I know that. I've been there. And I think everybody else knows. So congratulations. Congratulations to all of you guys over here that got chips tonight. It's, it's hard work. It is. It's really hard work to be on this path 
with so much wreckage and just stuff behind you. It's like, am I ever going to overcome this? Or would it just be easier to say, forget it and go back? Because it would be, really. Because the past we know. We know what to expect. Nobody expects anything of us. So that's kind of our comfort zone. Nobody expects anything of me. Nobody cares. Nobody worries. So sometimes we just say it's easier to go back. But how awesome is it to go forward? Amen? And experience what life can be like today versus what it used to be like. Before we get started, I wanted to uh, reach out and say, Mark, um, one of our, our gentlemen that's always here, he had surgery this morning. He called me this afternoon and said he's doing well. He's going to, right now he's laying in his bed in Palo Alto at the VA watching the live stream. So I just wanted to give him a shout out and let him know that we're praying for him and pray for a speedy recovery. Um, welcome back our ladies that have been um, in quarantine for a while. So welcome back. Amen. So we are still in First John, we're in chapter 3. And we're going to talk about the love of God. And, you know, Kurt talked about the love of God. And I've entitled the message, Wanted, Dead, or Alive. So I'm going to go ahead and read the first verse. It says, how, see how, much, how very much our Father loves us, for he calls us his children. And that's what we are. But the people who belong to this world don't recognize we are God's children because they don't know him. You know, not everybody believes in God. Not everybody goes to church. On, what do you do on Sundays if you're in the bridge? Well, I go to church. I work in the grill. Well, not everybody does that. You know, not, not everybody knows God. But if, if you do know God or if you, if you think you want to know God, one thing God calls us to do is to be different. You know, Vanessa said, and I agree, she is not the same person that I met three years ago. Okay? Chelsea, who I think left already, she is not the same person that I met all those years ago, right? Neither is Ashley, neither is Hector, neither is Johnny, neither is Vi, and I could just go on and on and on and on because we've been doing this for, we're going into our 16th year. And so I see how people change, and we're, we're supposed to be different, you know? Yeah, we have our faults, we have our problems, you know? You know, we're not perfect. We don't set perfect examples. We don't get along perfectly. We don't do everything right. But we're on a journey where we want to start to do more right than wrong. Amen? We want to be somewhat different. How many of you sitting here today, raise your hand, should have been dead right now? Okay, pretty much all of you, right? How many times have we overdosed or done something stupid or driven drunk or driven high? You know, there we go. So almost, you know, we're, we're in, look around. You're in good company. Amen? Right? This is why we are all together. Think about this. In the Bible, it says that, that God left the 99 to go after the one. You guys are all the one. All of you. Right? And even if you don't have a shady past, it's still good. We're still called to be different. We're still called to be and help and serve those that need help, right? It says God came to seek and save that which was lost. He didn't come to heal the people that had no need of a physician. You know, you don't go to the doctor and say, hey, I, why are you here today, Mr. K? Well, because I feel good. I just want you to confirm that I feel good, that I'm doing good. No, if we're not sick, we don't go to the doctors. And believe you, at the, believe you me at the bridge, people like to go to the doctors, Right? You know, we don't take care of ourselves for like 16 years out on the streets, but then the day we get sober, it's like, well, my, I got to fix my teeth and my hip and my this and my that. And, you know, it's like, it's like, seriously? You didn't care about it yesterday, but now, but now you do, right? We start to care. Here's a funny story. I had some girls riding in the car with me one day, and one of the girls was talking about shooting heroin with toilet water. And I said, well, amen, I've done that at a Taco Bell. I got water out of the back of a toilet at the Taco Bell in Salinas because um, they had the sink off, the faucet, because they're smart. They know that dopers go in the bathroom in Salinas, right? Amen, at Taco Bell, right? Do Wiener Schnitzel too? Um, I was a regular at the Wiener Schnitzel bathroom. That was my fave, right? That was my favorite bathroom in Salinas. But anyway, she was telling me about that, and I said, well, me too. And then um, she noticed that I was eating some Skittles, right? I love this story. She said, can I have some of those Skittles? 
I said, well, yeah, absolutely. So I tossed him in the back seat, and she shakes a few out and throws them in her mouth, and she's chewing them. And all of a sudden, she just hucks him back up into the windshield. And she goes, these are expired. <laughs> I said, what? You just told me you shoot, shoot, up, you shoot up with toilet water, and you're not going to eat expired Skittle? Really? What's going on? Do you know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. Our, 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 our thinking is just crazy, right? But, it, but we're trying to now get back into a different line of thinking. We're trying to be different. We're to be set apart. We're to be called apart, you know? If you're not dead, think about that. Is there a reason that you're not dead, right? Amen to that. There is a reason. There is a reason because you have been given yet another chance. How many people ask for a second chance, Right? The two guys going to court tomorrow, you better be raising your hand, or Thursday, yeah. Please judge, right? So we ask for a second chance, and we beg for a second chance, and we get it. And if we got that second chance, we have to ask ourselves, is there a reason that God keeps giving me additional opportunities to do something different? And I say, yes, absolutely. There is something yet for you to do, right? I said, wanted, dead, or alive. God can use you dead, you know, he can just let you go. Your time is done, nothing to do. You're not any darn good anyway, so what's the point? Right, but that's not who God is. God is a loving God. God is a God of second chances. God is a God that wants to see you do something different, you know? What if I would have died? Who would be doing this? You know, what if Vanessa would have died? What would her parents be doing, you know? Who would be running the women's? I don't know. But because people got the opportunity, they're making the most they can with that opportunity, and they're getting busy, and they're doing what they need to do. Some of us had, have had a third chance, and a fourth chance, and a fifth chance, right? Amen? You know? So what this is saying is that, that God loves us, right? It said in, in chapter 1, uh, 1 John chapter 1, I, I gave you guys the analogy that God has called you. And I gave you the, my, one of the best analogies I know how. When Bob calls me and says, hey, Mike, you want to do Salinas Valley barbecue and get ribs? I say, absolutely. I'll see you there. And we order up a mess of ribs and tri-tip and brisket and hot links and just, because we're, we're trying to do it under the auspice of keto, so then we just have an iced tea with it. You know, don't get none of the sides, which I kind of miss. I really like all those sides, you know, especially the Big Bubba Backyard Barbecued Beans and that cornbread, man, yesterday. That was awesome, you guys. Um, but <laughs> I need a napkin. My mouth's watering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bubba told me that I am the skinniest fat person he knows. Yeah. Because all we do is talk about food. Food and Jesus. Amen. Um, but what I'm trying to say with that is that, that I can't complain that I don't go have ribs with Bob if I don't either answer the phone or if I say no. No, I don't want to go have ribs. Okay. If God has called you and you don't answer and you don't say yes, amen, then who do you have to blame? You want to say, God, help me when you're going to sentencing, right? When you're riding the bus to jail on the morning of your sentencing or when you're driving down the road and the, the, the lights come on behind you. You want to pray then, right? You know, please don't arrest me. You know, don't pull me over. Don't do this. Don't do that. Then you want to pray. You know, you're calling all your friends. You know, anybody's going to answer the phone. Hey, I got, I got sentencing tomorrow. Please pray for me. I'm trying to get into a program, right? Then when you get into a program, you forget all about it. If you use the same fervency that you did trying to get to where you are today, you would be a lot further than you are. Amen? You kind of back off. You kind of lighten up. I'm there. You know, God delivered me from that. You know, I have Jacob here. He has, you know, like three DUIs, and we're going to court on Thursday. So I was able to introduce him to somebody yesterday at church, Robbie, who has 11 years. He graduated the bridge 11 years ago, that came in a week after his fourth, okay? His fourth one was on a lake being chased by the Coast Guard. Who runs from the Coast Guard in a boat on a lake. There's nowhere to go. 
It's a lake, right? So he said by the time he realized that, he had run his boat up onto the beach, jumped out, and was trying to push it back into the water so he could keep running from the Coast Guard on a lake when they tackled him and arrested him. You know what a sentence was for four DUIs? A year in the bridge. So not only did he get a year in the bridge, he got salvation here. He has a beautiful wife. He has two beautiful kids. He has a great job. He bought a home. So because Robbie stayed praying with that same urgency and that same fervency all the way through, and he carries it on through today, 11 years later. He serves here on Sundays doing security. He served on our board for a while. But we are called to be different. Amen? He loves us because he loves us. You know, if I was to ask Vanessa's parents, did you love her? Were there times when you kind of probably loved her a little less? You know, when you wanted to choke her out. You know, why is she doing this to us? Or where is she? And when is she going to come home? Or how many times is she going to go to jail? Or how many times is she going to cut shoplifting? You know, all those things that she did. You know, I, have, I still have her probation report in my sock drawer, right? I know it's kind of a weird place for it. She gave it to me to read. Um, and I read it. And I'm like, where? I, I just stuck it in my sock drawer. The other day I was cleaning some stuff out, trying to make some more room. And I'm like, oh, well, there's Vanessa's probation report. <laughs> There was nothing that she didn't take from the mall, right? Amen? Yeah. But she's not that same person anymore because she's different. Did God love her when she was being bad? Amen. Did God love her when she's being good? Amen. See what I'm saying? It's like the love of a parent. It doesn't matter what your kids are out there doing. You may be mad at them. You may be scared for them. You may be nervous. You may be stressed out, but you still love them. You still care about them. You still want what's best for them. And that's God, because God is our Heavenly Father. And that's maybe hard for you to grasp if some of you had a really bad father. I struggled with it for years because I had a really bad father. And I'm like, well, if God loves me like my father, then he don't love me at all. You know, I shared you with you a couple of weeks ago when I got emancipated, my dad didn't show up in court because he said he was done being a parent. You know, as much as I wanted to be emancipated, it killed me that he didn't even come and fight for me. You know, I ended up going into foster care and then ended up being emancipated after that. But, but it's still, it still hurt. But what I'm telling you today, no matter what you've done or no matter what you're going to do, God is not going to love you any less. So we need to stay busy and continue to move forward with what we're doing. With, so, but how do you know what you're supposed to do if you're not connected? How do, you, how do you know what you're supposed to do if you're not learning? You know, if you don't know what, with all that looks like, then try being in God's word. You know, I, I love it when someone reads a scripture and then they don't, like the other day, Vanessa texted me and she asked me a question about this verse in Proverbs about not being surety for somebody. It's like, well, what the heck does that mean? It's kind of obscure. Don't be a, don't be a co-signer for somebody, especially like one of your friends. Don't loan your friend's money, right? Amen? You know? If you want to ruin a friendship, loan your friend some money, and when he doesn't pay you back, you're not friends anymore, are you? Over what? Over money, right? It's, so the Bible is giving you wisdom. Think about things before you do them. Do you really want to do that? And every time I say this, people ask me, I, I don't loan people money. If someone wants some money, I will either let them work for it, I will give it, give it to them, you know, because we let my brother move into our home and because he stopped paying rent, we lost our home, okay? Did that damage my relationship with my brother? Oh, you betcha. Oh, you betcha. D did, I, did I say that right? You betcha? Yeah, he's from Canada. He, you should hear him. You, you should talk to him. Hey, hey, you betcha, hey. Um, but, but did that damage my relationship with my brother? Oh, it did. It did. It really did. So if you don't know how to act and what you're supposed to be doing, just go through Proverbs. It talks about wisdom. It talks about what you should and shouldn't do. You know, it says, it says really obscure stuff like don't move an ancient boundary stone. What does that mean? What does it mean, don't move an ancient boundary stone? And what the heck does that mean to me? I'm in rehab. So when you move an ancient boundary stone, what you're doing is you're stealing property from your neighbor. How does that sound now? You know, don't steal. 
right? Don't take anything from your roommate when he's not looking. You know, who stole my iPod? I don't know. You know, they were talking about at the house this morning. They were mad because somebody ate all the centers out of the cin- the centers out of the cinnamon rolls, right? <laughs> like so. So we're in. So what are we talking about this morning at the Devo? Who's who's still in the centers out of cinnamon rolls, right? I don't know. Is that going to send you to hell? Absolutely not. But just think about what you're doing and just, you know, stop doing dumb stuff, you know. I bet Nate has never had to stay on a Sunday to the congregation and stop eating the middles out of the cinnamon rolls. I guarantee you he has never said that. Whole different group of people. Um, But we need to learn the do's and don'ts of being a Christian. The Bible is not a book of don'ts, right? Well, you can't do this, you can't do that, you know. I enjoy waking up in the morning and remembering where I was. I, I don't like sitting on the toilet with a trash can in my hand coming out of both sides because I was out all night. I don't worry about a policeman being behind me or they following me, you know. I remember the night the detective called my house when you answer the phone and it said, this is Detective so-and-so, can I speak to your wife? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I wanted to say she wasn't home, but she was standing next to me and she could hear him. So I gave her the phone and he, he told her that I've been buying dope in Salinas and that I need to, you know, and then he told her everything that I was doing because they'd been following me for a while, right? Been following me. And he said, I'm going to give you some advice. Keep your butt out of Salinas and you'll keep your butt out of jail. Fair enough. I said, okay, amen. How will you praise the Lord? Three days later when he arrested me, he said, what did I tell you? (laughs) Didn't I say stay out of Salinas, stay out of jail? I said, yeah, you did. Well, guess what? You're under arrest. And then he read me my Miranda rights. That's what my life was like before. Reading the Bible and understanding what God's plan is for my life, it's don't do stupid things, you know? And all the things that I've had to give up, I'm not, I don't, I don't miss heroin. I don't miss smoking cigarettes. I don't miss smoking marijuana. I don't miss stealing. I don't miss lying. I don't miss cheating. I don't miss any of that stuff. I don't miss the old friends that were only your friend when you got a sack. You know, you think all these people are your friends when you go to jail. Nobody calls you. Nobody sends you an eye care, right? Do they? You know, can you call your connection and say, hey, I've given you so much business over the years. Why don't you send me an eye care package? You know, like the sweet and savory. No, right? But you know who is right there in jail with you? God. He is. God is in there with you, right? Think about it. The Holy Spirit is in there with you if you want him to be. You know, I loved when I went to the jail, when I started going to the jail many, many, many years ago, I had a whole group of ladies, and I said, what do you ladies want to do? They they said, excuse me, they said, we want a Bible study. We don't want to just talk about a bunch of stuff, because we hear stuff all day. We we want a Bible study. I'm like, okay, amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I can do that. So I got to go in every week, you know, T-Pod and U-Pod and sometimes Q, and do a Bible study. And they would bring their Bibles, and they would bring notebooks, and they would ask questions. And I love that because it's like these are people that want to change. Did I see lots of them come back? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're out this week, you're back next week. Well, it's, hey, it's good to see you again. And then unfortunately, it's like, well, we're so-and-so. Well, so-and-so died. Oh, didn't make it back this time. See what I'm saying? You got to remember who you are and where you are and what you need to do. And how many, how many chances are you going to ask for before... You know, a cat only has how many lives, all right? How many lives do you think you have? You know, if God has continued to set you apart and save you, maybe you need to figure out what it is I should be doing differently to be productive or be prosperous or to reclaim who I am as a person or reclaim my good name. You know, Michelle and I have been watching these, all these old shows that are like from like the 17, 14, 16, 1400s through the 1800s. And what's really big on all these shows that we've noticed is people's word. You know, their word was everything. 
There, I mean, that, that if I broke my, my, broke my word to you, you might as well kill me because it was that important to them. And I look at how our, value, our values as people have decreased so much. You know, my, my family name has been so trashed by my family. I, I think I would need a lot of lifetimes to rebuild it. You know, but all I can do is do what I can personally do and, and make myself, make sure that I'm right and that I'm doing what I need to do. Love Viola. See, it's, I love that. He's oh, Pastor Mackenzie. Yeah, I just, I, get, I just like walking around with him because he does that. He makes you feel like you're like Snoop Dogg at Costco or something, right? You know, got, you got your own little cheering session with you. I, I love it. You know, hey Viola, go way over there and then call me again. I'll come over. All right, here we go. So verse. See, gosh, we did two verses. Wow. When I was looking at this text, you know, I was like, you know, a lot of times I like to, I go through the text and I like evaluate and say, okay, this is what I'm going to teach. And then I go back and listen to what other people are teaching about that particular text. And I'm like, why is, why did all these commentators only get to verse three? I'm doing the whole chapter. I don't think so. (laughs) Now I know why. There's a lot of stuff in here. So let's go ahead and verse three. And all who have... This eager expectation will keep themselves pure just as he is pure. What you guys should have, and I say this all the time, is I personally, I have an expectation. I do. I believe that if I follow God and I'm obedient to God, I expect that good things will come. I have that expectation. Just like the story, and I I told it before, and I'll probably tell it a million more times, the story of the fig tree that Jesus cursed. When the first time I read it, I'm like, well, that's pretty rude cursing a tree. What did that tree ever do to you? You know? Well, the, the fig tree had an appearance of bearing fruit, right? But it, but it didn't bear fruit, and it was cursed, right? I don't want that in my life anymore. You know, I want to bear fruit in what I do. You know, I want things that I do to actually mean something. So let me read that again. And it says, for all you to have this eager expectation, you know, an expectation that things are going to change, that I'm going to get my kids back, that I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go to jail um, for three DUIs. I'm not going to lose my family, you know. Have an expectation that if you're doing what's right and what God has called you to do, have an expectation that he's going to answer prayer. You know, you know, maybe you say, well, God doesn't answer my prayers. Well, I've been praying for things for years, and I sit down and ask, well, tell me some of the things you've been praying for. Oh, a hot wife, you know, you know a, a hot-looking guy, you know, a new, a new set of wheels, you know, a new whip, you know, whatever. You know, but I'm like, are you praying for things that are in God's will for your life? Are you praying to be a better man? Are you praying to be a better woman? Are you praying to be a better mom or a better dad or a better uncle? And are you praying that God will give you the opportunity to mentor or to reach into somebody's life? When, you, when, you're, when you're not praying selfishly, when you're praying for things that are within God's will, there should be an expectation that things are going to turn around, that I'm not that fig tree that just looks like it's bearing fruit, that actually I start bearing fruit. You know, Tommy, I, Tommy says it all the time. He's like, you know, gosh, so-and-so, they're just bearing fruit in their life. And then we have other conversations. Well, that guy, he's just not bearing any fruit in his life. And I'm not talking about anybody in particular, so don't try to guess who I'm talking about. You know, you know was he talking about Chris in second? No, I wasn't, you know. Um, I'm just saying in general, I believe that, that we should be expectant that God wants to bless you. And like I asked you at the beginning of the teaching, who feels like that they should have been dead already? And most of you said me. Almost, I would say 99% of you have said that. But if God has spared you from yourself and kept you alive because he loves you, right, then he wants something more for you. So you, could, you should expect, you know, Jeremy was sharing this morning during Connect, well, I've never really done anything in my life except for use drugs and get high. I've never had any hope. Wasn't it, were we talking about hope? I've never had hope of something different happening in my life because this is what I just thought I was going to do, that I didn't really plan on ever changing. 
that somebody actually pursued you, right? You know, you know, Pastor Aaron from Napa pursued him and said, I want to get you into a program. I think it'll change your life, you know, and he pursued him and called me, hey, I got this guy, I'm really going to try to get him up there, you know, and like, what do I got to do? Well, you got to get him a coat. First, you got to get him out of there. You got to get him detox. You got to get him a coat. I mean, there was a lot of steps, you know, that could have gone wrong at any point in time. And he did it quick. You know, when you want to rehab, you better get him there now before they change their mind. Get him on the plane quick, right? You're not going to jump out at 30,000 feet, are you? You know? People are smart. You know, let's, let's, you know, let's get him. You know, you know, get him while the getting's good. But what I want to say to you is that if you understand that God truly loves you, and truly wants what's best for you, and truly wants you to be a good, a good dad, you know. I had somebody at my house working yesterday, out digging in the dirt, planting plants, not because he loves me. You know, I'd say he likes me, right? I think we're all right. But he wanted to be over there doing that because he wants to send, he wants to earn money because he wants to send money to his daughter. He wants to help one of his children out. He wants to be a good dad. There was a day when it was like, heck no, heck no, I'm not doing that, right? I I need to get high, right? But when somebody changed and they're like, no, I'm going to spend my free time working because I want to help my kids, that's a changed man. Completely changed? Hmm, takes, you know, could be, you know, but they're in that process. And you should have an expectation that if you're doing what's right and doing what's in God's will, that things are going to start to change in your life. And things are going to start looking. And people won't even recognize you anymore. People might even accuse you of not being fun anymore. Well, you're not fun anymore. When Michelle and I, when we, when we met and we got married, we worked, we worked at a hospital with like over 1,000 employees. And we partied, right? We partied. And we would, I would go back and see people that I worked with. I mean, I was a firefighter paramedic. We partied hard, Right? <laughs> As soon as we posted on, on our Facebooks that we were doing this recovery ministry, man, that sucker, that just dried up. <laughs> and, and nobody responded to us anymore. Do you know why? Because Mike and Michelle are no fun anymore. That was okay. It was kind of hard to take because even when we went back for things at the hospital for like her mom's retirement, it was kind of like, heaven, nobody wants to talk to us, you know? One of Michelle's friends like, you don't drink at all? You can't even have one? You don't smoke? You don't party? You don't mess around on your husband? Are you kidding me? Are you crazy? What's wrong with you? And we even drove to the Bay Area to this girl's work and left her notes like, please call. You know, please, please. I mean, we did it like time after time after time with, with no response because we're not the kind of people she wants to hang out with anymore, right? We are different now. We are set apart. And if you're a believer in Christ and you believe that God's love is coming into your life to help change your life, then do what we do. Do the next right thing and just keep doing that and keep doing that and watch God start to bless your life. And as he blesses your life, your life will start to change dramatically. You know, you're not in jail. If you're not in jail today and you're sitting in this room, praise God. Right? If you're sober tonight, praise God. If even one of your kids is talking to you, praise God. Right? If you're going to go to a safe place tonight and sleep in a bed and wake up and have a cinnamon roll with no sinner in it, yeah. praise God. Amen? Right? And they were also complaining about because someone scraped all the frosting off the cake. Right? Now I, want, now, I want you to think about that for a minute. Okay? Now... Now, now, go with me here just for a minute, okay? All right? Because these guys got problems, right? So they went from running from the cops, stealing, lying, cheating, banging, doing all those things. Their biggest worry now is who ate the frosting off the cake? Are you kidding me? Right? But, but you see what I'm saying? So the problems went from 
get me out of jail, give me a place to sleep, save my life, to who ate the frosting off the cake? Do you see how the problems have changed? See how things have, or see, I'm trying to show you guys how much things are different now, right? Right? You're not going to go do a drive-by because somebody ate the frosting off the cake, right? So it's, so things are changing. When your biggest worry, when you, that, that's your biggest worry, like, the, oh, wait a minute, and someone took the glazed donuts and they cut Pac-Man shapes out of them. <laughs> I'm like... I'm like, if I'm really, I'm really here in a house full of 22 guys, right, who have come out of jail, prison, the streets, the hospital, from being homeless, from being wanted, and the biggest complaint is, who made Pac-Man figures out of the donuts? And who scraped all the frosting off the cake and who ate the cinnamon out of the cinnamon rolls? Gosh. I, I, my heart breaks for you guys, you know. I just want to know who's talented enough to cut Pac-Man figures. And I actually thought about it today, you know. I'm not going to even share who I think did it. But, but if that's the biggest worry you guys have tonight is figuring out who cut the donuts and ate the cake, then amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord, right? Amen, right? Look how that turned around, right? I can hardly wait for Devo tomorrow, right? Right, who sent the corn puffs to the girls' house, right? <laughs> All right. So I, I love this. I do. I love this. I love seeing a hardened criminal come out of jail that's worried about going to prison, and their biggest concern is now, who ate the cinnamon out of my cinnamon roll? I mean, think about it. That's pretty good. That's, that's, that's living a changed life, right? Whether you, whether you know it or not, your life is beginning to change. Things are beginning to turn around. Amen? So I'm going to have Kurt come back up, and I'm going to use Kurt as an example again. Kurt was sentenced to life in prison. So where should he be tonight? He should still be in prison, all right? No? But he's here. I want to I want to share a real quick Kurt story. Two things Kurt wanted to do. He wanted to go to the store. He said, "Mike, I have been craving kosher pickles and feta cheese for like 20 years." Right? So we went to Whole Foods and Kurt bought kosher pickles and feta cheese. Right? So the next day, you know, cuz he's been away for a long time, so I'm having some fun. So the next day, Austin and I had to go to the Del Monte Shopping Center. And I said, Kurt, do you want to go with us? He said, yeah, Mike, where are we going? I go, we're going to the Apple store. Do they have a store for apples? I said, they do. All they sell is apples. He said, all right, let's go. <laughs> the Dollar Tree. Yeah, I couldn't believe that. Uh, how much are these batteries? They're a dollar. Nothing had prices on it, so I was like, Mike, how much are these right here? And he goes, a dollar. I go, get out of here. Like that. Well, and I said, I like, Kurt, <laughs> we're at the Dollar Tree. Well, okay, well, then I got, well, then how much are these sweet glasses? Well, they're a dollar. No, they're not. Kurt, they're a dollar. <laughs> okay, okay, well, how, how much for this big old bag of candy? It's a dollar. <laughs> no, it can't be. I said, it's the dollar store, everything. Really? <laughs> yeah. Everything's a dollar? He bought so much stuff. <laughs> he didn't need glasses. He didn't need battery. He bought stuff he didn't need because it was a dollar. Yeah. Now, is that a changed life? It's kind of like the donut story, right? It's a shock life. Right? I just came out of prison, and I'm tripping about everything's a dollar. Because he's like, stuff in prison has cost way more than a dollar, right? Yeah. Amen. But, you know, but thank God that, 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 that Kurt decided to go down a different path. Whether he believed he would ever be free or not, he decided to walk on a path. Whether any fruit would be bore out in his life, he decided to walk a path. And on that walk and on that path, he found freedom, okay? And he's here tonight because of that. Amen. One of the greatest stories that I like to tell about Kurt is he met a, a man in there named Lamont. They were both doing life sentences. 
They played worship in prison together. They would sit around the yard saying, someday, someday, maybe God will see fit to letting us both out of prison and we can play worship music together. A couple years ago, they had that opportunity right here. Kurt, uh, Kurt was here, Lamont. Came from a prison 12 hours away, down in here, showed up. And so that dream, that talk that they had about maybe someday God will see fit to us playing worship music together outside of prison. Isn't that amazing? That night was so awesome. So we're we're still trying to get Lamont to come back. He keeps swearing he's going to. And when he does, we will have them both up here. Awesome is a uh, awesome. Um, Lamont is a very gifted bass player, and uh, and uh, we'll get to share that with him someday. So, Lord, thank you for Lord for meeting us here tonight. Lord, thank you for Vanessa and for James and for Julio and uh, all those that have celebrated those milestones tonight. <coughs> Everybody that celebrated 30, 60, 90, six months, nine months. Lord, thank you for them. Thank you for the sobriety. Thank you for their safety. Thank you that they're here tonight, given yet another opportunity to change the direction and the course of their entire life. And we just thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen.
God be with all of you. Amen. Thank you.